Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over our monthly dividend income for the month of August of 2024. So with that being said, let's get it. All right, so we're going to go over the dividends in this video. We're also going to go over um, options premiums. We're going to go over our buys and sells, profit and loss, and we're also going to go over our newest positions that we've taken on in uh, call debit spreads mostly and one put debit spread. So let's get into the content. All right, so we're starting here on M1 Finance. Um, just going to go back in time here. Okay, so I'm going to fly through these. So we got four cents from PFLT. This is starting August 1st, ending at the end of the month. So 21.10 from PDI, one cent from Verizon, uh, $1.21 from UVV, $1.81 from TLTW, 17 cents from Beto, uh, 24 cents and 4.69 again from OARC, another one cent from Beto. Uh, for two hundred sixty-five dollars and forty-four cents, and then also four hundred and forty or forty-four dollars and sixty-three cents. Um, from TSLY and NVDY, uh, seventy-five cents from Apple, one cent from Texas Instruments, forty-five cent total combined from HRZN. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, one cent from PSEC, five cents from EFC, three dollars and ninety-two cents from RYLD, and again, four sixty-four from RYLD. Now going back over here to kind of the forward and looking forward in time. Uh, okay, so I don't know what that was. Uh, eight, sorry about that, y'all. Uh, eight cents from EFC, five dollars and eighty-nine cents from QYLD. Again, QYLD, fifty-four cents, seven dollars and sixty-two cents from RA, a dollar eighty-two from USOI, forty-eight cents from SFAL, uh, twenty-one seventy-five from ACP. 14 cents from OPP, 9 cents from uh, CLM, 3 cents from BSTZ. Uh, CRF, we got 9 cents and 31 cents. CLM, 2 cents, 1 cent again from BSTZ. And uh, lastly, 98 cents from CLM. So we don't usually show the holdings in here because, again, we haven't really been focused that heavily on... Sorry, give me one second. Okay, yeah. So we haven't really been that heavily focused on this particular portfolio. We're trying trying to build out the Robinhood portfolio first, and then we'll get back to this one. Uh, there are many reasons for that, but we're just going to go over kind of the brief overview of what our positions are. So we got some Embridge here, uh, MPW, Leggett & Platt, UVV, WBA. Um, and those are the main five dividend growth stocks we have. Of course, you know, there's been some dividend cuts and some other nonsense going on there aren't out there in the world uh, regarding WBA uh, and some other certain companies, but uh, we're not going to talk about that in this video. So as you guys know, these unfortunately have been getting beat down because of the uh, Fed funds rate, making borrowing costs expensive. So I suspect those stocks are probably going to go back up when the Fed cuts rates. At some point, they'll go, they'll go back up. So TSLY, uh, PDI, ACP, RA, uh, RYLD, and VDY. GSBD, QYLD, TWO, USOI, TLTW, OARC, uh, CLM, Horizon, Apply, SVOL, CRF, OPP, and EFC. Uh, so we do plan on adding back OPP, RIV, EFC, and SVOL, and even adding two things like Horizon, CLM, and C CRF in the future. We're just not going to do that at this point, and maybe even BSTZ as well, and also PFLT. So that's uh, what's going on with this portfolio right now. So the total in terms of dividends for this one for the month is $388.99. So now I'm going to actually go over to the um, Fidelity portfolio. So this way you guys can see nothing has changed. Okay, we still have the same positions, but unfortunately they have kind of gotten beaten to the dust. It's starting to look very attractive to buy these at this point. Uh, whether we're going to buy them or not, or just simply hold them and wait for them to go back into profit. Uh, we don't know yet. So that's what it looks like as of right now. So 47 cents um, in terms of savings interest from the SPACs this month on August 30th. You guys can see going back in time, this is the uh, basically the um, orders and activity here. Activity log. So you guys can see the last time we actually made a major transaction here was back in May. Uh, so no funny stuff going on here. Okay, guys, uh, been completely transparent as you guys can see based on the history, nothing's changed. Okay. So, um, 
Yeah, so that covers the uh, savings interest for that. Now I'm going to go over the crypto portfolio. So the only thing that I can remember that we actually bought this month, um, or not this month, last month in August in terms of native crypto was just simply Filecoin. Again, the two major ones that we're probably going to buy going into the bull run is going to be Filecoin and AIOZ. Uh, we're pretty bullish on those. So and kind of maybe scroll down here a little bit, see how far down these transactions go. I'm not really sure. Um, okay, so we'll go back down a little bit further here. Uh, we have bought quite a bit uh, during August time frame. So that's July. July, let's go up here. Uh, more July. Still more July. Okay, here we go. So starting August 10th, so we got uh, 5.21. And then pretty much all of these above this is going to be buys. So, you know, another $10, another $10, another $10. And it keeps on going up the list. Okay, as, as this goes up, the uh, dates go forward in time. So you can see all the different transactions here. Uh, particularly big one right here, $100 worth at $3.63, 27.5 tokens. And just keep on going up the list um, and kind of take a look at some of the recent transactions. So August 23rd, again, if we go back in time here, you guys can see uh, that the 25th through the 31st would have been the last week. And we, we didn't cover that, of course, because we were going to do the monthly video, which covers it anyway. So you can see here, uh, 4.7 tokens, August 25th. Yeah, it's the same one. Okay, so uh, then August 26th, 2.44. Uh, August 28th, 5.35. And August 29th, 5.27. So kind of just slowly uh, scaling into this as time moves forward. And of course, nothing has really changed here. We still have all the same positions as you guys can see. Uh, we're basically, with what we're doing with the portfolios, we're pretty much putting on a double hedge here. So we're investing in dividend paying stocks and options, options premiums, uh, plus making money through other um, different avenues uh, to basically hedge against the possibility of a recession. And we're adding to crypto portfolios and um, some called debit spreads, which we're going to get into in a minute to... Um, so basic okay so basically in short the dividend paying stocks and the options premiums from cover calls and cash secured puts in addition to other sources of income are in case of a recession okay so that would be the kind of worst case scenario best case scenario we go into bull markets uh, in crypto and crypto stocks in 2025 and we're adding to these positions in crypto um going into 2025 and also by by extension buying the dividend paying stocks and the crypto is betting on the bull run coming up in 2025. So that's kind of the game plan as of right now. Um, I would be much more comfortable aping completely 100% into crypto if the Fed funds rate was at all time lows already, but it's not. So we have to consider that as well. Um, now going over here to Webull. So Webull, this is pretty simple. We just got one one dividend, okay, $22.13 from ORC on the 9th of August, as you guys can see here. Uh, so same position, we're basically just waiting for this to go up. Again, things like the ARC ETF and Tesla um, and TMF, they should theoretically all go to uh, newer highs when the Fed cuts rates because they are rate sensitive stocks and or ETFs. And of course, you you guys already know TMF is an inverse the Fed play. So when the Fed raises rates, TMF goes down. And when the Fed cuts rates, TMF goes up. That's usually what happens. We've showed you guys that uh, in previous videos. Okay, so we've covered a lot of those. Okay, so you got your 47 cents here and then 22.13. And then the um, also the uh, M1 finance dividends. So now we're going to go over the dividend buys and the dividends we got paid out from uh, Robinhood. So we have the dividends paid out from Robinhood came from QDTE, XTTE, SPYT, MSTY, Tesla, NVIDI, OARC, AMZ, YBIT, Crash, uh, Kony, MRNY, GUI, SQUI, YMAX, YMAG, TSLP, FEPI, and AIPI, okay? 
And the total for that comes out to $2,336.61. We covered most of this in the previous buy, sells, and dividends videos that we do on a weekly basis. We'll go over the rest of it um, in this video that we didn't cover for the last week. In terms of buys on this portfolio, we bought SPYT, um, TMF, XDTE, TSLP, and Kony. Yes, we did buy some Kony again. We are expecting Coinbase and MicroStrategy to go up um, to basically moonshot around the end of the year and going into, I'd say, roughly about the first half of next year, uh, maybe even the second half. We'll see on that one. Sells on this portfolio was uh, SQUI, so SQY. BTBT, SoFi, PLTR, Crash, NVIDIA, and Veritone, which the ticker symbol is V-E-R-I. Um, in terms of profit and loss, we made $207.16 on the uh, Very stock. Uh, Squee lost $181.05, so that was a loss. BTBT, we profited $567. SoFi profited $357. Uh, PLTR profited $86.00. Uh, crash, we lost $190.80 when we realized that when we realized that there was a likelihood that um, that the markets weren't going to sell off, we just decided to get the heck out of the short position because we're not a big fan of shorting the market. Just just to be completely honest, it was kind of more of a hedge. Uh, and in terms of Nvidia, that's a combined. Um, so there was a gain and a loss. That's a $152.57 gain. So for the NVIDIA one specifically, um, I'll tell you guys right now, on 816, we sold for a gain of $163.43. And on 823, we sold for a small loss of $10.86. And that's how those numbers came about. So in terms of total profit and loss, it's plus $997.88. So... Uh, called debit spreads, put debit spreads. So all of these are going to be called debit spreads with the exception of PLTR. Okay. So Palantir, we have a put debit spread, which means we expect expecting the price of Palantir to pull back because we think it's kind of overextended. Um, American Airlines, GameStop, Wayfair, CLS, or CleanSpark, uh, Snap, and Affirm. Those are all called debit spreads, which is a bullish uh, it's a bullish strategy. So that's A-A-L-G-M-E, W-C-L-S-K, SNAP, and A-F-R-M are the tickers. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the... Um, we'll take a look at some of the... We'll get into the call debit spreads in depth in a separate video, okay? Because it's going to take too much time to go over that today, but we'll take a look at some of the dividends that we got paid recently. Um. And when we get to the call debit spreads and put debit spreads, we'll just go over a separate video on that. So let's first take a look at XDTE here. Okay, so this will cover the buys and it will also cover the uh, dividends as well. Okay, so that week, that particular week started on the 25th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, it did. So 25th through the 31st. Okay, so we got we basically bought 0.19 shares here on the 28th, 0.19 shares on the uh, 29th. Again, relatively small amounts, but we're splitting the money between whatever the up upcoming X date is for the dividend capture strategy, plus trying to slowly scale up XDTE and that TMF position. So $20.04 on the 30th paid out and then bought another 0.19 shares on basically today. Okay, so next one here, Q1, uh, not QILD, QDTE, that's what I meant to say. So QDTE scrolling down here. Um, we haven't added really much of anything to it lately, but you guys can uh, see the most recent dividend payout here was $31.26. So scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. Um, yeah, so during that week, $31.26 here. I'm trying to think of what other what other positions might have paid during that week. Maybe TSLP? I don't know. Let's, let's take a look at that. We'll take a look at TSLP as well. Uh, so... No, it did not pay in that week. It paid in the previous week. 
uh, and you guys can see recently we just bought two shares, so you'll see that on the next upcoming uh, buy, sells, and dividends video. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, so SPYT is going to be paying out soon, and uh, we can take a look at FEPI and AIPI, but I'm pretty sure those also paid out in a previous week prior to the 25th. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah, so they did actually didn't pay during that week. So you can see here we got 10803. That's from uh, FEPI, it looks like. Yeah, so that's FEPI. We'll do here a, whoops, AIPI. So $146.43 here on the 28th from AIPI. AIPI is kind of underperformed a little bit, but then again, I mean, the market's been a little bit shaky lately. So if we go into another big boom, another big run up in the markets, it wouldn't surprise me if this thing did end up recovering its um, price. Okay, so that, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that covers all of the dividends on this um particular portfolio. So now we'll take a look at the buys for the week. So we took a look already at XDTE. Now we're going to take a look at SPYT. Okay, so scrolling up here, you guys can see we bought quite a bit. So 3.99 shares on the 26th, 5.01 shares on the 27th, four shares even on the 28th, four shares even again on the 29th, uh, and then another 10 shares on the 30th. Um, and we, d we basically did a, d a double buy here, and that was because, of course, Monday was a holiday, so markets were closed. We basically bought for Monday on Friday. And then we're expecting a dividend here soon of $46, which again, we'll go into the next weekly video. Um, so next one here at TMF, we're going to go to TMF. And again, this one is the inverse, the Fed move. Um, we basically, uh, we don't really plan on this one playing out to maximum profitability, uh, probably for like a year or two, because again, or maybe less time than that, it depends on what the Fed does. But basically, as long as the Fed is cutting rates and the rates are not actually fully cut, we plan on being in this position until it looks like they're basically going to stop cutting rates. And at that point, we'll, ideally, we would want to sell for a profit. So um, 0.34 shares here on the 26th, 0.17 shares on the 27th, 0.17 shares on the 28th. Uh, 0.17 shares on the 29th. So we're just very slowly adding to this. We intend to continue to do so at a very slow pace going forward uh, until it becomes more obvious what the Fed's going to do. So uh, last one here is Coney. Uh, might have to cover TSLP as well. So yeah, you can see here about 5.86 shares earlier today on Coney. Uh, again, I, th I think that I can't guarantee this, but I think that, you know, Coinbase, MicroStrategy and anything else Bitcoin related is likely going to start moving up in October. Uh, I do see that as being highly likely because that's what happened last time. And of course, the Fed cut rates during the halving year also last time. And uh, markets had kind of a V-shaped recovery, but then they kind of went sideways into October with very slight markups, and then eventually Bitcoin took off to the moon right around October to December. So uh, TSLP, um, yeah, okay, so we, we don't need this one uh, for the buy, sells, and dividends for the previous week, because again, that week ends on the 31st of August. So we've pretty much, I think we pretty much covered everything in terms of uh, different transactions here, buys, sells, all that jazz. So I just want to take a look at a couple more just to see. Yeah, okay. So this was on August 13th. This was the BTBT one. Uh, we'll take a look at Squee.
Yeah, so, okay, so we got out of this one also on the 20th. And then SoFi and Palantir, we'll take a look at those. Um, and then then once we're done with this, I'll give you guys a brief overview of what the call debit spreads uh, look like and what exactly we're expecting from them. So uh, SoFi... This one we did get out of at a profit. This was earlier, basically earlier in time. So you guys can see we offloaded our shares right there. Okay, so this is unfortunately taking a lot longer to load than I thought. Um, so yeah, Pal Palantir, we got out of this one a while ago. As you guys can see here, it's not even popping up right now. So uh, this was actually all the way back in July uh, from the look of it. Uh, so yeah, I think I think we basically got our shares called away in um, August time frame, and that's where the profit comes from, the $86. As you guys can see here, we sold the call here, and this was for a, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was a weekly call going into earnings or something like that, and then it turned out to be profitable, and we just let our shares get called away and recoup the money plus the profit. Okay, so um, pretty sure we covered all the transactions here, so we'll talk a little, a little bit briefly about the... Um, call debit spreads and the put debit spreads. Okay. Okay. So you guys can see we have a bunch of different expiration dates, a bunch of different positions. So in short, pretty much what we're expecting here with CLSK is we think that CLSK and the Bitcoin miners are going to hit all time highs around December or January of next year. That includes all the miners. Okay. All of them, CLSK, Mara, everything. Um, Got to go back and look at the charts on Coinbase and MicroStrategy. But if Bitcoin and the miners are heading up by around that December, January timeframe, all of these miners should too. So basically, um, the largest positions that we have here in terms of these call debit spreads are CLSK, uh, Wayfair, that's the W1 right there, and then GME. So GME has got earnings coming up next week, and then the one for Wayfair and the rest of these positions are any, all of these positions that are stock related are going into earnings. Okay. All of them that are in the traditional markets, their expiration dates are set after earnings. The exception here is CLSK. Okay. So CLSK, uh, this is based on the cycle of the timing for crypto. Okay. So if CLSK goes up to, let's say 25 or $30 by December, January timeframe, as long as the price of CLSK is above $20, what that $20 call right there is, the higher strike price, we can exit the position early, even before expiration, because we're not holding till expiration, regardless of whether it's a win or a loss. And we can exit out of that position early for maximum profit. Okay. So that's the same is true for all of these call debit spreads. Now, the put debit spread is the opposite. Okay. Put debit spread is a bearish position. Uh, Earnings has already happened for Palantir. We're kind of a little bit more short-term bearish on Palantir, uh, expecting some kind of pullback because of how overextended it is. We're not bearish on the stock. We just think that a pullback is imminent on the stock. Okay. So I'm actually going to show you guys that here. So PLTR. And again, I don't want to get too deep into this, but you guys can see how massively this thing ripped. Okay, this thing just went stupid. So it literally it literally ripped 55% in just a couple of weeks, okay? Uh, the only thing I worry about here is that maybe we put the expiration date a little bit too close in time, and maybe it should have been a little bit further out, but that remains to be seen. Uh, so you can see the Bollinger Bands. Uh, it hit outside the Bollinger Bands here, and then, of course, you can see it's pulling back. So this 2650 area we're looking at is basically right around the middle of the bands, but you can see these previous peaks here right around this kind of breakout area on this candle sits around that 2650. So that's kind of the logic behind that. Okay, so we'll get into the whole call debit spread, put debit spread stuff later. So in terms of options premiums, um, 
what we ended up making this month was $681 in options premiums. So I'm just, uh, I'm going to go over the ones that were for right around the time of the last week of the month, because again, we don't need to go over the other stuff. Okay. Uh, for the previous weeks. So in terms of, uh, let's see here in terms of the options premiums for the, uh, the previous weeks. So we had, or for the last week of August, I, I should say, basically the uh, only one that we did here was SoundHound. It was a covered call uh, for $20 times nine contracts, so 180 bucks. Uh, expiration date is 1018. And you guys can see that right here, 1018, nine cells. Um, and then the strike price is $6, and that's nine contracts total. And our average price is 591. So it's basically just right above the strike price. And then a Mara cash secured put on 830. Uh, for $27 times one contract, we closed that early for a, a slight loss. I don't remember what that was. Um, but again, it wasn't really that much. It was like a very, very small amount, like maybe 15 bucks or something. Uh, and the strike price on that was $16 and we just, um, we decided to get out of it, free up the capital and go ahead and do some, uh, call debit spreads, which again is the total for the call debit spreads and put debit spreads roughly about three K, uh, by the end of this year, start of next year, we're expecting about a four and a half X or so on our money. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.